With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with the San Francisco 49ers. Now a man who really stepped up last year. This is Matt Breda. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Garoppolo after the fake give to Breda. Going up top. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. On play action, it's Garoppolo. He's got his man. It's Kendrick Bourne. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 yards, first down, Niners. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? Here we go, here they we go. catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Now he'll let it go deep left side. And this is caught inside the five. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is here going go, to go, be go. because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. A first carry for the former Falcon, Tevin Coleman. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Debo Samuel. There to make the grab. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. So second and goal there from the one. They go to the air. And the perfect down to throw the football in this sequence. Second down is always kind of that. Do they throw it? Do they run it? They worked it out to perfection on that one by throwing it into the end zone. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And the 49ers grab a 7-0 lead.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Baltimore's offense takes the field again. Charles, they are at 6-2 and two after that win against New England. Two-game lead over suddenly a resurgent Pittsburgh Steelers team, and they get to see them again the final week of the season. But what does that win over New England tell you about Baltimore's chances in the AFC? It tells you a lot. The main thing it tells you is that this is a team that's not going to shy away from the spotlight. Not going to be intimidated by New England and all their Super Bowls and, you know, what they've done this season. But I really enjoyed watching them post-game, you know, watching how they handled it. Yes, it was a big win, and they didn't downplay that, but they also didn't treat it like it was a Super Bowl either. They know they've got work to do, and they figure they'll have to meet New England again in the playoffs. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Throwing is Jackson. Catch is made by Marquise Brown. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. The 49ers have Richie James back deep. Fielded at the 20. It's a 49-yard punt, but subtract nine there for the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. 49ers coming back out here on offense. We mentioned their 8-0 start to the season. They actually broke an eight-game losing streak to the Cardinals when they defeated them. Eight-game losing streak? Yeah, they lost the Cardinals eight straight times. That's four seasons worth. Yeah. Wow. And then a 28-25 victory this past week snapped that. But it was also the first game this year that the Niners have actually thrown it more times than they ran the football CD. And that is something that I think people are starting to come to grips with about San Francisco because you think about their head coach, Kyle Shanahan, and his reputation as an offensive wizard. And whenever we hear that, what's the first thing we think? Throwing the football. He's always here, been a run-based guy, and he wants that running game finely tuned because it travels late in the season and it travels through the playoffs. And that's what, they, that's what leads San Francisco. They had to go the other way against Arizona in order to secure the win. Well, if the Niners have it their way, the only travel they'll be doing in the playoffs will be to Miami. Because as it stands right now at 8-0, they would play at home until that point. And why Miami? Super Bowl. There you go. Here we go. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. Got him in. He finds Sanders. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. But forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. So go, again go. from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Here's Garoppolo to throw. And he finds his tight end, Salek. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Here we go, here so we go, second go. and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 24-yard line. Samuel, the 36 overall pick in last year's draft. Played his college ball at South Carolina. Really good senior campaign. 62 catches, 882 yards, and also threw in 11 touchdowns for good measure. Garoppolo already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. On first down, here's Breida. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. 
Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game here moves go, on, go. and they can run it back inside later. On second and nine, Garoppolo. He'll get this into the hands of Burita. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And his kick here is good. And the lead moves to 10-zip. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Here's Snead as they run the jet sweep. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, oh, yeah. and they'll stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Come on, come on, D. Bang, bang, bang. They go to the former Saint, Mark Ingram, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. On is the punter, Cook, who sends it away. And that'll hit at the 5 and go into the end zone for a touchback. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. Here we go. Garoppolo 
they're going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. To throw is Garoppolo. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. You got to give some credit. They're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. On second down, a run with Breida. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected go, passing go, situation. Throwing is Garoppolo on third down. It's caught by Sanders. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially, it's no gain on the play, and they'll remain a few inches shy of a first with third down looming. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. The offense on third down tonight, they've been good. Three for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Well, that's complete to Sanders. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Here we go, here two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Garoppolo gives to Breda. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. Oh, and go, really, go, the go. offensive line not helping him much. On second down, it's Coleman. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And the punt over the side in the air, and go. the spot will be inside go. the 35. And now here come the Ravens. They've had it twice. They've punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down, and they may be going backward here. 
Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Jackson going to get this out to Brown. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. On second down, Ingram. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson. He finds Roberts complain. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. Nice throw there by Jackson. You think about what a boost he gave Baltimore in the middle of last year. Led them to victories in six of their last seven games as a starter. Replacing Joe Flacco, who had the hip issue. And that strong finish was good enough for the Ravens to capture their first AFC North crown since 2012. And now Jackson's a known commodity. He's the unquestioned starter and with increased expectations and pressure on the former Heisman Trophy winner. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now it's Jackson. Got a man, it's Brown. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 25-yard line. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The Ravens on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Here's Jackson. They go screen. This is Ingram. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. From the gun, Jackson. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. From eight yards out, as they are now on the board here in the first half. As the offense went on the field to start their last drive, you know they discussed in the huddle, hey, if we put one in the end zone here, we've put ourselves in a position to start making a comeback. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away go, again. This team Wait. now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Garoppolo looks to throw. And Sanders has got it complete. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. here, second and a yard from the 34. Garoppolo. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A gain of 10 and a 49er first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Back-to-back -to -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Garoppolo after the fake give to Brita. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Oh, my goodness, was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. They fake the give. Now Garoppolo looks to throw. Taking a shot for Samuel. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away here's from here's getting here's the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Domina Pecco racks up the sack. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Yeah, because they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking, but to me it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. Here's Thomas. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. You got it. How about the you two Bosa it. brothers, by the way? Both it. defensive players of the week in week eight for their respective conferences. Joey had two sacks, four tackles for a loss, and a win over the Bears. Nick had three sacks and a pick in a win over Carolina. On second and nine, Jackson. This will be caught by Brown. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. That's it. Big hit. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. 
The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. A first down run, good for about three. Second and seven coming up. Marcus Peters up to make the tackle. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used go, to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Now it's Breda, and he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. This one just shy of the 40. They'll mark Let's him go, down baby. at the 39. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is go. nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Okay, baby, I see you. It appears they found something that's working, and they keep going back to it. I guess you can actually say he has the hot hands now, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's one thing to hit your guy out of the backfield once, hit him a couple here times. Go, go. Yeah, you're right. Maybe they're onto something. And I think a lot of that is simply if you get it to him in space, more times than not, he's going to get more yardage than you expect out of each play. Well, they try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He was hoping to get that one to Tevin Coleman in space. And it's third down. Well, touch and time here critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse go, here go, here trying go. to get it to his back. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Garoppolo now. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And the 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. Stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Well, hey, we talked about the AFC playoff picture. Let's look at the NFC. That's a different story. You've got Dallas and Philly neck and neck in the East, then Green here Bay, go, New Orleans, go. and San Wait, Francisco please. as division leaders. But with only two more wild card spots, there will be some good teams left out in the cold in January. Yeah, because right now you got Seattle at seven and two, Minnesota six and three. They would now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. 57 to Mike. 57 to Mike. After the interception, here's Jackson rolling to his right. And now he's going to use his legs. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They'll throw on first down with Jackson on the move to his left. He's going to take off with it, and he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. First and 10, it's Jackson. He'll let this go for the end zone. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. 
Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there, but it'll be second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Sneed's got it. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Jackson, and he's got Snead. Touchdown, Willie Sneed, as the first half is winding down, and the Ravens have taken the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust go, their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This will be from 56 yards out. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Baltimore with good starting field position as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Letting one go deep for Roberts. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter. And you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation where he was sharing time with Kamara in New Orleans. Now he figures to be the top guy in the Baltimore backfield. Although I guess you could say he's kind of splitting time with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson. But a great veteran presence Mark Ingram is behind Jackson. Ingram now in his ninth NFL season. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. 
And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Jackson now. It's complete to Snead. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really nice gain of 25 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. I got him. He's checking. He's hot. Hot. Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. 54 is Mike. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. Let's go, defense. Let's go. They'll look to run with Ingram. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. To throw is Jackson. This is caught. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? They'll try and run. Ingram. And he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away. As the Ravens push further out in front. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes it a 21-10 game. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. 
Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. That sends them two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away. Now the defense loses him. It's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the we 45. It's a gain of 34. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to go, do go, that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well to get a few stops. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and 10. They run with Breda, and they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle right, and run off a bunch more plays. On second and nine, Garoppolo, that's caught, it's Coleman. And he's gonna be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 30. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football go, before go. it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go to the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. On, the Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Here we go, here we go, here we go. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Here we go. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Watch the three. Watch the three, man. Second hit. Second hit. They run again with Breida. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here we go. Here we go. What do you need? On second down now, it's Coleman. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Throwing now is Garoppolo, and it's caught, and he can't quite get there. Tackled down Let's at the go. one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And, you and it's complete in the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Debo Samuel. His second touchdown of the afternoon as his guys are back within a single score. Now, there was no going go, through the go. progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. And he's got it. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. 
Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. A five-point game now as here comes the kickoff. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. It's caught inside the 25. And he gets it down deep into San Francisco territory. A big play that time for the Ravens. And even 50 yards. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Jackson, option right. The quick feet by Jackson. Excellent job on the keeper. 20 yards and a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. And again, it's Ingram. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop it right around the one. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Now he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now, what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. And I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. Tucker named the league's all-pro kicker for the third time in 2018. Go ahead and admit it. The only time that you get excited about Justin Tucker kicking is when he actually misses. It's and excited rare. is not the right word. Surprise is more what we're talking about. 90.1% coming into 2019. He's incredible. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. The San Francisco offense getting their last minute instructions before they take over here.
Here we go, here we Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Breda. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. That's it, baby. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here we go. The previous Wait, run, good for nine. Here's here second and a yard. Here. And here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> to throw, it's Garoppolo. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. We're on to the fourth here on Thanksgiving Day. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Here we go, here we go. What do you need? Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, let's go. Ten. Ten. Here's Garoppolo on first and ten. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Michael Pierce in all of his 340-pound glory gets the sack. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Debo Samuel, the rookie wideout, his intended receiver. And now it's third down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. Open man is Samuel, complete. They'll wind up with 17 on that one, but they're still a bit short here for fourth. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Garoppolo. He finds Coleman. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Throwing on first is Garoppolo. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. First down, San Francisco. The pickup, 14 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like go, that first down Three. there, you need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. To throw again on second down. Garoppolo, there goes a deep ball in zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. 
That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They run. It's Mark Ingram. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Ingram again. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give him 17 on that pickup. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. This is where, you know, fourth quarter, you got the lead, you give it to the big guy. Defensively, kind of sucks the will out of them, doesn't it? Because they don't want to tackle him right now this late in the game. You say that with accusatory tones. I mean, you know, but you're exactly right. I know it's not something we actually want to talk about, but as a defender, four quarters worth of trying to bring people down, four quarters worth of pounding, and now late in the game, here comes that big guy coming at you. And a lot of guys are wondering where they want to come up and make that tackle at this stage of the game. Ingram again, a first down carry. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have to contend with a third and 13. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Flush to his right. He may try and run for this. And avoids the contact by sliding. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will bump the lead up to 11. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall.
Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So here go, here second go. and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Garoppolo. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Here we go, here we so go, the failure go. to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Garoppolo looks to throw. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Looking to throw, Garofalo. And that is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now really hoping for a turnover. Well, they'll take that every time with a lead. First down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it, and you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down, have to stop them, have to get the football back. But eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. Ingram. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The offense on third down tonight, not quite 50%, four for nine. They're looking at third and a few inches. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Tucker's kick is good, and that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
The San Francisco offense getting their last minute instructions before they take over here. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened You think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Here we go. Here Second we go. Here and we go. six, Wait, just inside the 30. So that'll back him up five. Here we go. Wait, Amy! Five, three, six. Watch the run, watch the run. Get hot! Garoppolo to throw on second down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes, but now you gotta have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. From the gun on third, Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores, they have to try and make something good happen. Here we go, here All right, go, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Garoppolo to throw for it on fourth. He's got his man. It's Kendrick Bourne. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Garoppolo and the Niners now. Down by two touchdowns, two minutes to play. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short here we go, order. Here we go. What do you need? Here we go, here we go. Watch the slant. Garoppolo on first down. It's caught by Coleman. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the hey, clock on, running. On, Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Garoppolo hustling them back to the line now. Looking to throw again on second down. Garoppolo, that's going to be caught by Samuel. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance go, to win this ball game. Garoppolo in the offense with a first and 10, and he's five for six now throwing the ball on this drive. Again, they'll throw with Garoppolo. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Nice job. Nice patience right there. Put him on the right side. Let him work his way across. Put the ball in his hands and let him work go his ahead, way upfield with a catch. First down now, but that clock rolling. And yet again, it's Garoppolo. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Oh, 
The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. From the 22, here's second and eight. Yeah, let's get second. Jackson, option right. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. The 49ers have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. This is Ingram. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. James now to return. Almost out kicked his coverage there. 48 yard punt, but 10 on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Let's go, let's bring it. Let's bring it. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And they'll start with great field position at the 41 yard line. Down to Anigos Jackson, and that should seal it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports.